Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got the big papa himself, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I am doing fantastic. Happy to be here. The time zone changed. You tricked us, Mark, though. You guys, Arizona, and it's complete lack of... Uh system right you guys do whatever you want with this time zone change we, we have so much sun that we don't need more sun so <laughs> that was that was sort of the logic behind it uh I think it's a good thing i think that should be in our next presidential poll because i hate it my baby is not sleeping like normal it's terrible so I'll, look i'll i'll, I'll I might vote just for move it over i might just move to arizona at this point I, you're more than welcome it's a good state it's great it's great Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Great, great. We've got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. How are you? How's it going, Mike? <laughs> going very good. And last but not least, Cynthia Chapati. Cynthia, how are you, Cynthia? I'm pretty good, Mark. Excited to be here. Yeah, we had to uh, really cajole and, and persuade Cynthia to come on the roundtable podcast because it's the, the testosterone levels have gotten so high that we really needed somebody to sort of balance us out. And Cynthia was brave enough to come on and take that role. So thank you so much. Got it. All right. So Scott Todd is away on his 20th wedding anniversary in Hawaii. He'll probably be back next week, all tan and relaxed, but let's get into it. Let's talk to Tate. Tate, had an interesting, what would you do scenario? So Tate, what, what's going on here? All right, so some students of ours, I was on a call with them yesterday and they have got an interesting situation. They sold a nice piece of property for $50,000 on terms and they're collecting 400, I, I think it's $400 a month on that note. So it's a good note, right? The only thing is, the people who bought the property are not exactly high class citizens. They are regularly late with their monthly payments, but they always catch up. And so, I mean, they pay their late fees. They always catch up maybe a month, they'll miss a month and then they'll double down the next month. Not the end of the world, as long as they're getting paid. Right. But the issue is this, they're living on their property, which is permitted and the guy is out there with his family and one of the family members invited another friend to live on the property with him. This guy is a low life and he is causing quite a bit of ruckus in the area, in the valley that this property is in. And he is not well liked by his fellow neighbors. And he actually got arrested recently for sneaking on to one of the neighbor's ranch land properties and stealing an ATV. And the police showed up at this guy's property. This is our student's client. And they arrested this, I think it was a brother-in-law or something like that. Sent him to jail because he had a prior and now he's in prison basically. So that causes a little bit of tension with the people in the community, but the guy's still paying his monthly note and he's not doing anything wrong. Well, just recently, the person who has purchased the property got arrested and thrown in jail. And he got arrested because he is a felon and he got caught with a firearm. So the question that these students were presenting is, what would you do in this situation? The guy's regularly late, but his note is big enough to where 400 bucks a month, that's kind of work a, worth a headache, right? He's not doing anything illegal on the property, but he has been causing a bunch of uh, problems in the, in, in the community and the surrounding neighbors. They're sick to death of this guy. What would you do in this situation? Would you get rid of him? Can you get rid of him? Or do you deal with the headache? What would you do in this situation, guys? Eric Peterson. <laughs> All right. Um, so did, did you say that the, the buyer went to jail also? The he buyer went to jail as well. Okay. Buy, so for the fire he's out. He's out yeah, now. He's out now. He's out so now. Was, oh, he's back out. Okay. So it was just a short term thing. Yeah. Just a quick stay in the big house. 
<laughs> so, um, man, I, I think, you know, I'm just trying to, to run through, you know, what my contracts say. And, you know, I mean, I don't know that I have anything in my contract that would give me an out aside from them, you know, taking too long to pay. Um, so if they're not in default, um, they're not breaking any zoning, you know, regulations that are in place. Um, I'm not sure how I would get rid of them. Um, however, on the brother, I might talk to that buyer and say, you know, based on, you know, the feedback in the community or whatever it is, you know, I can only allow, you know, you, the, the immediate family that has, has purchased this property from me to be on the property until it's paid in full or not on the property, but living on the property. Right. Um, so that maybe will ease a little bit of tension in the community if, if, um, if he was able to, to kind of work that out. But, um, yeah, I mean, aside from them actually defaulting, I, I don't see any immediate way out. So, I mean, here's the other thing, you know, this guy's moved his entire family out there. If you, if the guy was to stop making his payments, obviously you would go through the foreclosure process. Good luck getting rid of these people, right? Yeah. I mean, well, they'd be squatting and they would know, be squatting. We, we've gone through a squatter Tate. I mean, it's, I know, it's possible. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it, but. All right. I mean, how about, let, let's see what Cynthia would say. Cynthia, what would you do? For me, I mean, $50,000 term, that's, not, that's a pretty long term length. I mean, it's not like you're dealing with these people for a couple years. It's like, I mean, probably a good solid term length. So, I mean, I Google search everyone before I even give them a, a let them purchase for me just to make sure I'm not dealing with any felons or anything. Um, but I would just be like, I, I would refund them and say, you got to get off. Like we they've already been on it for like 18 months. They've been on the land for a long time. And they've, I mean, they've made a lot of payments. It's $400 a month. At what point, Cynthia, is the headache worth it? It's once a month, right? I mean, that, that depends on the, that depends on the person issuing the note. I mean, are you willing to deal with that issues, people getting arrested, neighbors causing a ruckus? Cause you have to remember that's a risk for you. If the land's still in your name, I mean, that's, I think that's a personal, you know, how risk averse are you? If you're pretty risk averse, you got to get them out. And at the end of the day, if the land's in your name, refund their money, move on. Like, sorry, you've caused too many issues. You got to go. I know what Mark's going to say. I know Mark's going to be like, they're not worth it, man. Anybody that disrupts my Zen, maybe that's Mike I should be speaking about, but I know Mark's going to say anybody that messes with my flow of a daily life and makes my existence more difficult is not worth having in my life. Am I right, Mark? I, I have, uh, I have two issues with this. Number one is that contractually speaking, if they are not breaking the land contract, which based on the scenario of what you've They're said, not. We They're cannot not. legally get them off the property. However, I would go back to what Cynthia had said. And as soon as they are within default, there is no way that I'm giving them a 31st day to cure their default. So once they're 35 days late, they get the letter. You got 30 days to cure at the 31st day. Uh, uh I'm not taking any more payments. I am yeah. foreclosing. I am calling the police. I'm calling my lawyer. I'm getting the whole family out and I'm getting them out of my life because just like you said, life is too short. And, uh, you know, if they're causing a trouble for the neighbors now, they're going to be causing trouble for everybody down the line. And it's just bad karma. That would be what I would do. But based on the scenario, I mean, they're not doing anything illegal. If they're not doing anything illegal, I can't get them off. But Mike, what, what would you do? Would you deal with it? He would call his bounty hunter. Yeah, but you know what? I would call Mike's bounty hunter too. <laughs> um, it's tough. I think what you're saying is absolutely correct, Mark. And I also think that if you're not ready to, you know, if you don't understand the process involved or what you're talking about when you, you know, foreclose, that's why it's important to be schooled in that and educated. If you do it wrong, you could poke the bear and then you could be, you know, really, uh, 
give yourself more trouble. So it's very difficult. I think uh, it points towards a lot of things. One of them being knowing, like Cynthia said, who we're selling to. Um, but none of this is going to really answer the question that Tate's asking. I just think that um, they haven't done anything that's contractually going to allow us to tell them to leave. Then, you know, this is the deal we've done. You know, I know we're supposed to be stewards of the land and we might want to, are you going to deal with that neighborhood and sell all the parcels there? You want your name to be well represented, but you kind of get your hands tied at this point, you know, unless you can find a real, um, some sort of out based on the contract. I mean, and that's, that was kind of what I told him. I said, at this point, guys, I mean, if they're not breaking any rules or regulations within the county, I mean, and they're paying you, people, you don't get to choose your neighbors. That's, uh, I mean, it's a big enough property to where, I mean, their neighbors are not within a stone's throw. These guys are kind of isolated, which is good, but you don't get to choose your neighbors. So I don't like my current neighbors right now, but what am I going to do? kick them out, tell them I don't like you, move away. I don't really have a choice here, All right? I mean, Rand Paul just lost, like cracked four ribs over a fight with his neighbor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this, is a, this is a senator in Kentucky. They're fighting over like trash. So, I mean, you know, and that's the, I think that's one of the hidden benefits that we probably don't talk enough about with raw land is that you and I are not actually physically having to go out there and check on a physical premise that might be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and wondering, you know, in the middle of the night, are these people, you know, destroying my house and there's nothing legally I can do just except, you know, take it. And maybe I'll get some, you know, their security deposit back. So, you know, what are they going to do? They're not going to destroy the land as long as they're not dumping, you know, anything toxic on the property or anything environmental. They're not breaking the law. You know, it's, you know, it's really not going to affect you day to day. No. So. I mean, and it's 400 bucks a month. I mean. And they're paying. I mean, they got enough in it. They're not going to want to lose six grand already into it. They got That's, enough into it to where it's like, you know, I was telling them, you know, for 400 bucks a month, that moves the needle in, in most people's lives. I mean, that's free money basically at this point. Their property's paid for. I mean, that pays for like Eric Peterson's dinner once yeah. a week. Yeah. You know, him and his wife just going out and like, you know, having a nice dinner. A lobster dinner down there, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I told him, I said, you know, at this point, I'd probably deal with that headache. If it's only once a month that I got to deal with a headache, I don't know. But then again, Mark, we did turn away that one lady, remember? No, we did. And and it was a, that was probably even a better note. That was like 700 a month. Yeah, it was. But she was... She was too, she was not worth the headache, but you know, like Cynthia said, I really like what she said in the very beginning. She Googles everyone. If they had done a little bit of due diligence before even doing the deal, they probably could have gotten the same note just with a better quality buyer. I don't know, but that's, I, don't, I think that's the answer actually. That is the answer. But I mean, when was the last time we Googled any of our clients? Well, that's why we're talking about on the round table. Eric, yeah, was the last I, time you Googled a client before you sold it. It's been a while. I have done it before, but it's it's a rare occurrence. Mike? I have not. I mean, I don't do it. All you right. know, I did it once, and I had a guy who had like four pages of issues with the court. And I'm like, ooh. But I mean, guy. Cynthia, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that kind of what makes our business so special? is we don't do the credit check. We don't meet, you know, it's a, it's a handshake, right? Like, Hey, put your money down, live up, sign the contract. As long as you pay your monthly terms, you can do what you want. I'm a, you know, I'm hands off. Isn't that what makes this business so appealing to most people? Totally, totally. But that doesn't mean we have to be dealing with felons. I mean, there's plenty of people who is want the money green. Is the money green? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, most of us tend to advertise as no credit checks or background checks or things like that. So I just, I would also, if I were to come across something that, you know, made me nervous about moving forward with a transaction, I wonder how I would even address that. You know, I mean. Yeah. Well, you would say, hey, I'm, I'm, you did refund their adopt, you refund the down payment and say, I'm so sorry. Someone else already bought this property right before you. 
and this happens, you know, infrequently, but when it does happen and next time I have something similar come up, I'll contact you and, you know, that's Not put it. Them on the buyers list, you know, <laughs> you don't put them on the buyers <laughs> list. So you could do that. I've, I've actually done that a handful of times and in, in the past, gosh, 16 years, it doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, you, you got to figure out a, a very, nice way to extricate yourself from that relationship because at the end of the day this is a long-term relationship they're paying you every single month you know you're kind of there's some kind of contact now if it's all automated with geekpay.io which i know uh they this, are they are they are i mean that's even less that I mean, it's hassle not even there once a month. It's so not even once a month headache right? the software is really dealing with them i don't know i that's, that's the whole reason I created GeekPay. <laughs> so, I mean, to avoid Mark, that right now, knowing the situation, are you doing this deal? Are you going to, I mean, if you knew this going into it, that this situation was going to happen, would you take the $400 a month? I wouldn't. I'd get a better buyer. You wouldn't? No. Would you, Cynthia? No? Totally. You can get another buyer. Someone else will buy Eric, it. Eric, would you do it? I... I might still do it. It depends on how long I've been marketing that property. My, if I've been marketing it for a long time and they're my first real buyer, I might be taking that. Mike, what would you do? Would you do it knowing what we know now? I give everybody second chances. I'm compassionate. I'm doing it too. I'm doing it. I'm doing it for <laughs> sure. No questions asked. I mean, 400 bucks. What do I care? If he, if he defaults after two or three months, that's, that's great. That might be my new tagline. Second chances for everyone. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of an interesting situation, but, uh, <laughs> I think, I think we came to a good conclusion here as a group. I, I think if I didn't know the whole thing with the, with the, the person stealing the ATV, <laughs> you know, my, I wouldn't be so colored as to, to be like, no way would I deal with this person. But based on, you know, they're bringing their family out, the family's causing trouble, they're an ex-felon. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, like let's just say, you're you're more of a uh what be the, like a libertarian right so let's just say like they had a drug offense right you know if you're if you're if you're you know doing drugs and you're not selling drugs you can make the argument well at least they're only hurting themselves but if they got a firearm right and they're stealing they're hurting other people i don't know if i want that on my conscience yeah but if you don't i don't know I mean, well you made a a great point too that the real issue does not really rotate around the late payments because it's automated you're getting the late fees so that really doesn't even play into the you know once you realize what you know what, what, how that's automated that doesn't become the decision factor it becomes more what you're talking about clearly you know the firearms and things of that nature but the the, the late payment hey you're making more money it's automated it's actually yeah. thank you i mean we had a guy just this last week who we foreclosed on him and he sent us an email saying, Hey, I'll catch you up this month. And he's got, you know, $200 in late fees at this point. He's like, no problem. I'll pay him. We're going to give him a month and he's going to pay him. He already made his first payment. So, Hey, geek pay. That's a plus one for geek pay. You know, we no, I mean, ab absolutely. But you know, I, I like what Cynthia said. I, I want to know who I'm getting into bed with on a long-term note. If it's a three-year note. I'd be more liberal. I'd be, I'd, you know, I'm, it's, it's a judgment call, but, these are serious offenses. That I mean, this is your here. risk tolerance, right? And we see this yeah. all the time in the business, right? What's your risk tolerance when it comes to due diligence? What's your risk tolerance? I know for me, I mean, it's pretty laying low at this point, right? I'll buy just about whatever. Am I that way with my buyers who I'll, buy, who I'll sell land to? I don't know, apparently. Second chances. Second, Second chances. chances. Well, I guess Our, the question here, should we start putting a clause that says something that would prevent something like this in the future should we learn from this student's situation I, I, you know i'm i'm hesitant to take a handful of sand and call it the desert right let's 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 call it the shoe bomber syndrome right you get one crazy guy that that tries to put you know his shoes as a bomb and now the whole country's got to take their shoes off to go on an airplane Right, I don't want to overreact based on one bad apple, personally, and then start drawing up contracts and getting lawyers and getting the right language, all because of you know every situation that that could occur. Like generally speaking, our contracts cover a lot, 
Um, I don't know. I, I think how, that I think that we could we could definitely overreact. And how many people actually live on their properties? I mean, and, that, and that's the other thing is so few. It's almost non-existent in all reality, but kind of an interesting case. I'm glad uh, glad to hear your guys' input on it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let's let's move on to Cynthia Tripathi. So <laughs> Cynthia, you were on the podcast, and. Um, you know, we did not do a follow-up podcast because you went into coaching and uh, before, before you, when you went on the podcast, you had not been into coaching. You just started your land investing uh, journey. You'd not been to a boot camp, And so what I'd like to know is from your perspective, um, coming into it kind of skeptical, right? Uh, I had to meet you and Mark first before you guys would even get the toolkit. So coming in from like a very skeptical lens, uh, to where you are now, uh, what would you say? And then um, what don't we know about you? So like get to know Cynthia. <laughs> so what was the first question? Uh, the, first, the first question was um, what was your journey like from very beginning to going into coaching and coming out of it? Okay. So let me preface this by, so my partner and I, we lived down the street from Mark, right? Mark Podolsky. And when we first moved here, we moved here about three years ago. um, And Mark, my boyfriend was searching for local podcasts in the area. And so he stumbled upon the land geek and he starts listening to it. And he's like, Cynthia, we got to get into buying land. And I look at him, I'm like, what? He's like, we got to buy and sell raw land. There's this guy, he lives on the street. He's like super successful. He's been doing it for so long. You make these crazy returns. And I'm like, I don't know. So I started listening to the podcast. I'm like, yeah, this sounds interesting. Um, But I actually ended up writing a book. So that consumed my life for a little while. And so when that was over, a, a personal development book, Escaping Average, you guys should check it out on Amazon. There's my plug for it. Um, when that, that was be, over, that could be your tip of the week. My tip of the week's my book. It's kind of biased, but maybe. Yeah. So once I started finished my book, I'm like, okay, now what's next? And that's when I reached out to Mark, and I'm like, hey, I need to meet you because I need to see if this is real or if this is you know, sounds too good to be true. You know, everyone's skeptical. There's so much stuff on the internet. So we met him and I'm like, okay, great. So we bought the toolkit and our very first property sale, we sold by knocking on the neighbor's door. So we didn't go through any marketing. We purchased land close to where we live. We went to the, all our properties we bought and we knocked, there was one lot we bought that was conveniently located in between two houses. And so we knocked on both the neighbor's doors and they both wanted it. And one ended up buying it. It was basically a cash deal. And that sale I made was more money than I made in a month at the job that I hated. And that's when I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I have to go all in. So I totally just quit my job. I waited for like the like two year mark at my job so I could get like my benefits, my PTO. I took my three weeks of PTO and I just, I left and I, I wasn't, I mean, my passive income wasn't, I think I had done maybe two deals at that point. And I was just like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, like I'm going all in, like I already had success out the gate without going through any of the marketing. And I'm like, look, this works. I made the returns. You know, I think I made 300% or like 280% on that sale. And I'm like, that was so easy. This is awesome. So I quit my job. I bought coaching and, uh, it's, it's been great. I mean, it's definitely a roller coaster. I think there's this great book by Darren Hardy called the entrepreneurial roller coaster. And I think that a lot of times on these podcasts and these mastermind calls that people listen to, you know, it sounds like so awesome and easy and like everyone can do it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's about like putting your head down, focusing, and just doing the hard work. And, you know, you're not going to make 10 sales a day every day, but, you know, the sales that when you do get to that point where you can start scaling up, it's really, really awesome. And I think it can definitely really move the needle in your life if you're willing to work at it. What, what do you like most about the business and what do you hate about the business? I love being able to automate things. It's my favorite part. I love it. So, you know, once you get to the point where you've figured the business out, 
And then you can start automating and building upon that. I love that it's a bunch of these like low level menial tasks. I mean, like, I don't know, I want to say at least 70 to 80% of this business is like paperwork and these like low level tasks, which is awesome because you can totally automate it. You can create systems and you can hire virtual assistants for really inexpensive to handle that piece of the business for you. So then you can focus on the higher level, you know, strategies in your business, the county research, the marketing, the, the things that are actually going to move the needle. And then what's, what do, what do you hate? What do I hate? I'm going to be honest. I hate marketing. I just don't like it. My least favorite part. I love due diligence. I don't do my own due diligence. I have a VA doing it, but I love it. I love the research aspect of it. I love doing county research, but the marketing, like I'll do, I'll deal with leads. I don't mind getting on the phone. I don't mind selling properties. I'll talk to sellers all day, but it's just the marketing. It's the posting of the ads over and over again. It's just not my favorite. Eric, how can you help Cynthia to love marketing? <laughs> um, I, honestly, I think build a system around marketing, you know, um, build a team of VAs, um, teach them posting domination, um, you know, automate as much as that as you can. And um, it'll be less of a headache for you. I mean, you're still going to have to manage it and keep an eye on it, but in terms of writing those ads, posting those ads, and going through that whole process, creating new accounts, all of that, I mean, you can have a VA doing that for you. Yeah, how about you, Mike? What would be your advice? Somebody who hates the marketing to loving the marketing. Well, I don't think that you can make yourself love something, but I think that it can definitely um, realize that the more time and effort you put into it right now, the less time and effort you'll have to put into it later, right? So just just be like, okay, I'm gonna swallow this pill and I'm gonna I'm gonna get this automated. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the time um, and make it effective and then I'm going to find someone who can do it for me and be done with it. So just really front load it. Just be done with it and realize that every day is one less day, you know, that you're gonna you know, one day closer to not having to do that. So that would be the one we always talk about that, right? The pain points, the the, everybody's different. Some people love marketing. Some people love mailing. Some people, whatever it may be, but that pain point, just realize that every day that um, you're, you know, you may not have to do it the next day if you really put everything into it, right? So, yeah, I mean, exactly kind of echoing what Eric said. Just, just move really hard and fast towards automating that, and uh, get yourself out of it. I don't know if I can make someone love something. I don't know. Well, I mean, well, I'm gonna ask Tate. Tate, what, what do you think? I mean, unlike Cynthia, I really enjoy this part of the business. And I mean, the reason I enjoy it is because this is the part of the business where, you know, we make our money, right? And I'm always excited to figure out, oh, hey, how will this approach to sales work differently than what I'm currently doing? Will I see an increase or a decrease? You know, the split testing, the AB stuff. I love that because it's always evolving and there's no you know, what works today isn't going to work tomorrow. It might not work even this afternoon, right? So marketing is, it's challenging. And I think that's why people don't love it because, hey, it's hard. And it, just because it works for me, maybe Cynthia doesn't have the same voice in her writing as I do. So I don't know, it, it's challenging. Like Mike said, I don't think you can make yourself like anything. And it's not that I love marketing. I just love the results of marketing. And maybe that's what gets me excited about it. Maybe that's what allows me to sit down because I know that, hey, if I do this, if I write enough ads, if I teach somebody how to write the way that I think they should write, then this will be the outcome. And I love the outcome. Well, I know Cynthia a little bit and I know she's like a health nut, right? And she loves to work out. And most people would say uh, not a lot of pleasure in working out, right? It's pretty much pain, 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 pain especially when you begin. Not a lot of pleasure eating a kale salad when the guy next to you is eating a cheeseburger, right? Um, so I would make the argument, and Mike and I have this in common, like when I first started taking cold showers, I hated it, right? I'm like, why would anyone put themselves through this? And now I love it, like to the point where like, I'm like looking for the coldest shower possible. Like I was in the Rocky Mountains, I'm like, this is a cold shower. So... I think that it all comes down to mindset and, um, and sort of embracing, okay, 
this sucks for me. Uh, I'm really strong on this, this, this piece and this piece I don't really love. Right. So if I can sort of, you know, reward myself or get to a point where like, it's like a cold shower. I hate it in the beginning, but then just like what Eric and Mike said, you know, I can create these systems and I can create like these templates and either get it off of my plate or, you know, create like a game for it. Like these little experiments instead of like, it's like marketing is such a general term. Like it's really just experiments, right? Can I, you know, can I find the best three headlines, right? What, you know, like, a especially because she wrote a book, like there's a lot of creativity there. So can I create the best opening sentence that makes somebody click on this ad? And I think, you know, working on that and sort of embracing it enough to the point where you get over that, I think you, you know, you may never love it, but I think you can certainly enjoy it more than in the beginning. Cynthia, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I have automated it. I mean, I have a team of VAs that do all my Craigslist ads for me, but I just, I think that's the piece of it that I don't like, the testing piece of it. So I'm so analytical. I'm so, I think it's left brain. So I'm like, I just want like black and white. Just tell me what works and I'll do it. I don't like, and that's just me personally. So I think I've tried to force myself to like sit down and be like, okay, just 30 minutes, write ads. But I just, I, I struggle with it. But I think that's okay. I think everyone has their vices in this business. And for me, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're at the point now in the podcast where we get to put everyone on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, if you're Mike, maybe even a cool quote. So let's start with Eric Peterson. Eric, what do you got? Okay, today um, I have a app. I think it's available for both um, Mac and PC. Let me just double check that. It's called Station. So getstation.com. Are PCs still in business? I don't know. Do they? I mean, do people even use those anymore? I, I you know, I was at the coffee shop the other day, and I, I think I saw somebody with like an like a Lenovo and I'm like, what is that? And they're like, Oh, it's this, this computer. And I'm like, it doesn't have an Apple logo on it. And they're like, Oh yeah, it's not Apple. And I'm like, it never, really never heard of it, well. but I'm like, is this built in the 1980s? And they, they threw their coffee at me. It was a whole thing, but yeah. So anyways, um, this app, um, it, it allows you to, add in a whole bunch of other apps and kind of just monitor everything all in one spot. So you can add your Gmail account, your Google Drive account, your Google Calendar, your QuickBooks account, your Facebook account, your Slack account. And I mean, the list goes on. I mean, there's- What's the name of it again? It's called Station. Station. So, Station. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a nice tool to put everything in one place. Um, you know, and just be able to manage various accounts right there without having to go to your browser and open up all kinds of tabs. Um, so I've just, I actually downloaded it today. I've been playing with it a little bit um, this morning. Um, you know, I think it might how, be- How do you spell it? Because I'm looking at yeah. it on the App Store. I don't see it. Okay. I don't know if it's in the App Store. No, it's it Station. Is. Yeah, it's in the Mac app. It's Station by True North Software. Is this- Promotes That's more right. natural organization of applications, documents, and that the one. I'm going to put the link. In. The one app to rule them all. I, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's very that? Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Getstation.com. It's in the Get chat. Getstation.com. Oh wait a okay. minute, I mean, this isn't it. Oh. Get station. Let's send me a. See. Oh, you click on it. You said, and then they you enter your email address, and then they send you a download link. Oh, you know what? I tried to do this uh, a few weeks ago and they didn't send me the link, but I'm going to try again. Download now. Ooh. Oh, now I can download it. Okay. Save. Oh, this is a good app. Well done, Eric Peterson. All right. Well finally. done. <laughs> what was that? A couple weeks. You know, finally. 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 Okay. One. This is, this is a really good one actually. Um, download now. I mean, the, this is so good that I was really excited about it. And I was really upset that uh, when it came out, I couldn't get it right away. The list of apps is extremely long that you can add into here. I mean, uh, this is sweet. The one app to rule them all. This is great. 
You can put and it's Stripe free. in there. You can add, um, let's see. Oh, you can't do Sign Now, but if you had DocuSign or um, some of the other ones, those are there. Feedly, I mean, it's That's a really cool. Is uh, DocuSign's in there? Yeah. Yeah, DocuSign's in there. Oh, my goodness. So is this going to open up a new screen on my computer every time I open it up and it'll just be my workstation and I can shut it down? Yeah, it's it's just kind of like That's one app cool. that that contains you know all these other apps. Rules them all. Yeah, the so app like to rule them all. Wow, I love download it. Download it. This says download. What do you download? Did I? Did I... This is cool. I like this. Yeah, I like it. Download awesome, it. awesome. Um, Tate, what's your tip of the week? All right, my tips kind of weak and I'm happy Scott's not on the call but uh, it's uh, what, what, what makes you think Cynthia's going to be good to you I was, oh, I know. Yeah, I, Cynthia and I are friends you know we're, we watch out for one another so I know she's got my back uh, alright yeah. it's called similarweb.com and the reason I use it is because it will give you free reports on any website so I use it when it comes to the marketing channels we're often looking for new websites or places to post our properties. So if you go in there and you can search, you know, Craigslist or Backpage, and it will give you the stats on, on viewer traffic and what time, or excuse me, what websites see the most traffic and, and those kind of things. So you can dive into it from a marketing aspect. You can also go in there and search your own company website and get a little report on how it ranks and what you could do differently. So kind of cool for that little you know, that, uh, that aspect of the business. And if you type in like Craigslist, there's a section for classified ads and it'll list, Hey, these are the top classified ads for posting in the world or on the World Wide web. So just a little bit of a extra knowledge, I guess, market insight. So check it out. Similarweb.com. All right. Um, I I've used similar web. I don't, I don't think it's a week. All right, good. Good I know it's a fantastic tip. What was I saying? It, yeah, it's, it's not bad. You guys all. are welcome. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Zen Master Mike, what's your tip of the week? First, I guess, yes. Can you see that? Scott just sent me a photo of a temple. He said, Isn't that cool? You must, it cool. must be a temple over there in Hawaii. Uh, that's cool. Pretty cool. He's on the podcast via, via, via temple text. <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway, uh, so all right, I got a quote. Ready? Yeah. And then I'm going to convert it over to something for land. And then uh, Scott's not here, so I don't have to worry about blushing when I say it. So Chopping, <laughs> chopping leaves. There we go. Yeah, chopping leaves. <laughs> chopping don't leaves. Don't forget to breathe, as Scott would say. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> 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 it says the only zen you find on top of the mountains is the zen you bring there. And I would just say the only success that we find is success we bring anywhere. Like, I think it's a mindset. Wait, wait, you got to say that slower. Say that yeah, slower. Yeah, yeah. The only z- the only Zen you find on top of the mountains is a Zen you bring there. So a lot of people think you go places to experience something. That's true. That can happen. And a lot of people think that you become successful, but I think success is a mindset, just like this idea of Zen and peace. It's something that you bring with you anywhere you go. You could have that uh, in the concrete jungle of the city, right? You don't have to go and listen to birds chirping. I mean, you can do that anywhere. And I think success is like that. You can find it within yourself, no matter what stage of the game you're in. It's a mindset. I think that it's capable. We're all capable of it. And I think it, the sooner that we recognize that and, you know, uh, the better. I think maybe that's what it is when we finally become successful. We're like kind of uncovering what we already had and we're kind of letting it out. So um, I think this land business is very good for that. Okay. Okay. I, I, I love it. I love it. Um, any, any problems uh, with that, Eric? Cynthia? <laughs> no. Come on, Eric. He did a nice job winging that one. So. <laughs> Well, Eric, I'm, by the way, my my uh, my attention span is so weak now because of uh, all these devices. So you know, I'm really loving Station. It's like all your work tools neatly organized in Station. All your pages are grouped by app, so you never have to do it yourself. Simply hover on the app icon to see them. You can then star a page or a functionality that you use often. This is really cool. Unified yeah. search. Uh, Notification center, keyboard short. It's killer. This is really good. Okay. Very good. Tip uh, of all tips. Tips of all tips. Cynthia Trapati, what's your tip of the week? I'm going to do a book. Okay. Because I don't know if 
I can match the technology that you guys recommended. Um, I'm going to do my most recent favorite book that I read. It's called Deep Work by Cal Newport. Love that book. Hoping all of you have read it because it's fantastic. Um, it just totally shapes your perspective in a different way about working. I mean, usually we work, we have our email inboxes open, we have our, like, I have text messaging on my computer, I have my messages open, and you just, you get all these distractions, but it's fantastic. I think it'll totally change your perspective on when you sit down to work, especially, I mean, if you're doing land investing, we talk about get your two hours of focused work in, like, that's got to be focused, got to make sure that you're not getting distracted by emails and social media, and Facebook and text messages. And um, it's, it's just really a really powerful book. So I definitely recommend everyone go check it out. Yeah. And focus is like a muscle. I mean, the more you practice it, the better it's going to get. I think, you know, it's going to be very hard at first. Uh, to do that. So um, that's, that's going to be the issue. But, um, you know, the more, but I, like for me, like I, I did really well after reading Deep Work and then I fell off the wagon. I got to reread it. But like I was doing a like commencing shutdown. I was feeling great. And then something happened where I started checking email like every two seconds. <sighs> kind of hard. What about you, Mike Zeno? How's your, how's your focus? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of like you, right? I go through those phases where I kind of pull away from the technology, but then, uh, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's more, you know, you're going to have those moments throughout the day where you're, you're buried in all these technological things, but so you just need to set aside time of, uh, for something different, right? Whether it's getting in the cold shower, as you say, or jumping in the cold pool or going for a walk or whatever it is, just set up, you know, in the morning at the night, you know, at the beginning, you know, the book ends, at least do something to kind of pull yourself away from that. I mean, we're, we're, in, we're embedded in technology. It's helping us. It's just going to find a way to kind of balance that. So I think I struggle with that, but that's my goal every day. Yeah. I mean, last night, instead of uh, Snapchatting my children's good night, I actually went to them and they did the whole analog thing <laughs> and I hugged them and I kissed them. And I said good night. <laughs> and they're like, what, what is going on here? We're, you know, we feel very uncomfortable with this. I'm like, this is actually, you know, two people actually conversing in, in real life. And they're like, just text me. It's good night. And I'm kidding. <laughs> but like, that's kind of like what's going on. It's crazy, right? Yes. You know, the whole Instagram thing. And it's, the, it's the, all these apps are addicting. I, and I'm guilty of it as well. Um, it's, like a, it's like a common sort of uh, conflict around my house is you know managing the technology of the children and then managing myself and without trying to look like a hypocrite right so um very difficult like even even like the past few weeks i've been walking the dog in the morning without my iphone just so i'm like oh my gosh it's like jurassic park around here like there's like birds <laughs> you know as opposed to like listening to a podcast or listening to like you know uh an audiobook or something like which i which i used to do like now it's like oh this is really nice I, you know, I didn't, I didn't realize there were these things called flowers on cacti. It's cool. Um, my tip of the week is uh, it's app unsubscribe dot B. So app unsubscribe, but between the I is a dot B E. Now I have the link to it, but I don't know about you guys, but on the iPhone, it's really difficult to unsubscribe from any of those um, in-app purchases. You know, like you might have an in-app purchase for, uh, you know, something like HBO Go or um, like I have Headspace, which is an in-app purchase. Like it's a monthly thing or Blinkist, right? But if you want to unsubscribe from it, you pretty much have to be a, uh, a computer software engineer to figure it out. And, you know, the multiple steps, like they make it really difficult. And so this is a really simple way to unsubscribe and, um, and do that. Now, if you're on Android, you probably don't have this issue, but this is for, this is an iPhone problem. Eric's, Eric's smiling. I don't even think they have apps. On Android? <laughs> do they have an app store on Android? I'm Come just on, kidding. I have an Android. I know. <laughs> That's why, that's why Mike's so, so zen. He's not on his phone. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. 
What? That's a big jump from Android to do nothing. And what does that mean, <laughs> Eric? I do nothing. Not you. Oh, Your uh, phone. No, the phone. <laughs> Nothing. Did he hear that Alexa just chimed in? Sorry, I don't understand that. I don't know where she came from. But she didn't like that either, Eric. <laughs> well, this this was fun <laughs> for sure. Uh, before it devolves and Cynthia agrees to never come back on a roundtable podcast, Alexa's I want to thank back. the listeners and uh, remind everybody: look, the only way we're going to get uh, you know these busy people on these roundtable podcasts every week is if you do us three little favors: you got to subscribe. You got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of the review to support at the link.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Um, also, uh, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io. Get your first note for free. Try it. Start automating your life, simplifying your life, getting assured of payment because if their ACH bounces, you've got a backup on a credit card. Uh, it's, it's really, really simple and easy. The borrowers love it. Lenders love it. Everyone loves it. Um, except for the owner of GeekPay because it's a hassle, but we don't care about that. Anything else? Are we good? Let's do it. Let's do it. I, uh, I hope Cynthia, you're going to come back. Yeah, totally. All right. So we'll see Cynthia next week, which is, you know, so, so if you're a listener, come back next week and, you know, Cynthia will be back on with, uh, with a different perspective. So that's great. Um, all right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let freedom. freedom. Oh, geez. oh, man. I don't know. Scott, hope you're having a great time in Hawaii. We missed you. All right. Thanks, everybody. So, Cynthia, what are you doing for lunch now? I'm going to have a kale salad. How did you oh, know? Are you, are you really? <laughs> uh, have you been I to had... Poke Bar yet? Are you in trouble? Is that yeah. why you have to eat kale? I have eat you kale something so bad? I feel great every day and have the focus to work hard. Oh. There you go. I have you been to a Poke Bar yet, Cynthia? No. Oh, like- Scott Seal and Shay, it's like, it's like uh, Chipotle of sushi. Really? It's Instant. really good. Poke bar. Scott Seal and Shay. Let's check it out. If you like sushi. I do like sushi. I'm a vegetarian though. Okay. I, 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 I don't know what that means. Is that like, <laughs> so you like, so you have a side of broccoli with your steak or what is she it? Only, she only eats meat on certain days of the week, Mark. Mm. I never eat meat. But can you have fish? Um, I mean, I eat it occasionally, but I don't really like it. Okay. Well, I'm then you probably want like Poke Bar. You don't like sushi. Totally plant based. But um, Mark loves sushi. Well, he loves fish. So he loves fish. We All right. Eat. Tate, what are you doing for lunch? I don't know. I just messaged my uh, Allison to see what we're going to do. I don't know. I got another call this afternoon, so. Got to be something quick. All right. And Eric, I already assume you were eating ribs. Yeah, yeah I've ribs. already eaten. Pulled pork. <laughs> pulled pork sandwich. No. Is there anything else to eat in Tennessee besides ribs and pulled pork? <laughs> there are a lot of barbecue places. That's, that's true. Mind. But no, I just said just a sandwich today. <laughs> that's it. You know, <laughs> what would you say, Mike? Porcupine. Porcupine. They're, they're big on porcupine down there, right? Yeah. yeah. Speaking by of way, barbecue. Is, by the way, Eric, are you coming to boot camp in San Antonio? Yeah, of course he is. Give me another Wait. week. I'll have an answer for you. It, They've got to talk? Yes. Yeah, you Eric, know what it is. It's, it's, it's not that he'll have another answer for me. It's his wife will have the answer for, yeah. for all of us. So, Eric, Eric, this yeah. Marriott, it has got... Oh, my God. It has got this buffalo meatloaf that is to die for. Yeah. It is amazing. It's worth the trip. That's why it's, I'm going. I, honestly, I'd bring, I'd bring the whole family. This JW is so nice. And and I heard Mike Zano is getting cowboy boots this time. So I am. you really want to miss yeah. out on that? I mean, can you imagine the really comedy really of the of, of Mike Zano wearing cowboy boots? I fit right in. That's Nobody huge. Nobody looked at me twice with that hat. I fit right in. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I'll, I'll see everybody uh, later. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks. Bye.